These are my preparatas. This is a care collab. And coming up is my update. Thank you so much for taking the time to click on my video. I hope that you are going to enjoy some purpurata blooms, even though my Werkhäuserie on the left is looking a little bit sorry for itself. Thank you also to Fernanda Nathimento Orchids and Succulents for organizing this care collab. I so appreciate that. And I also appreciate every channel that is participating. The links to those channels will be in the description. Go check out what other kinds of purpuratas are being featured in this care collab because, oh my goodness, Lelia Purpurata is in a league of their own. Some collectors only collecting purpuratas, and it doesn't surprise me much. Reliable bloomers, beautiful fragrance, beautiful blooms in all kinds of colors and variations, and every one of them is a purpurata. The order in which I brought my purpuratas out to the staging area is the order at which they bloomed. The tall one in the back is my purpurata variety striata. This is her second blooming in my care. Her first time blooming was in 2022. I am super pleased with this presentation this year, simply because of the three blooms, how they spread out on their spike, each of them presenting beautifully with a lot of space. I did some light training. I would like to take credit for the fact that this is how the presentation turned out. Well, let's just say it was a little bit of both. The orchid herself is maturing beautifully and is able to do what she does. And then with a little bit of care in mind, <laughs> result. The second orchid that bloomed out is my Lelia Purpurata variety, Vakhoiseri. Funny enough, she is the first one to go down. Now, normally she should last three weeks easily. However, I misted some garlic alcohol on the shelf above her, and I do believe that some of that mist fell onto her blooms, and for that reason, we had a rapid decline, which is a pity. But luckily, I've got footage of all of them documented, which I'm interspersing into this video. Luckily, I managed to document her blooms while they were super pristine, only two days old. It was a bit of a windy day that day, unfortunately. And I managed to also enjoy the beautiful, creamy, sugary lemon sherbet fragrance that she has. At least she bloomed. And I will get to why I say at least in just a minute. The third one to bloom out, happy days is my Lelia purpurata variety Verkhoiseri striata. So you got the Verkhoiseri, the plain one on the left that just has the white petals and sepals. And then we have the striata variety of Verkhoiseri on the right with that beautiful vintage lavender. Love that color. But we have the lines and the flares and all that, the striata in the petals. You can tell I'm very partial to that beautiful vintage lavender color that features on the lip, and that's why I got me two very similar looking preparatas. Luckily, I would say, because in a year like this, when I make a mistake with my misting of the garlic alcohol, well, I still have the striata to enjoy. The fragrance on the striatas are very similar. So the original striata, as you see above, being the taller orchid, she has this beautiful rose fragrance, which is relatively intense. When the temperatures are warm, she doesn't have to be in the sun in order for me to enjoy that fragrance. It is divine. The same with the striata below has a similar rose fragrance. It is very beautiful, but it is more faint. And that has nothing to do with the fact that the original striata has three blooms, whereas the Verkhoiseri striata only has two. I don't find the Verkhoiseri striata to be as perfumed as the other two in my collection. Maybe I am spoiled now that the striata is in bloom year in, year out. <laughs> because I do remember back in the day that I thought the fragrance of the Verkhoiseri striata was divine. So I'm probably spoiled when the two of them bloom together. What I mentioned was thankfully they are reliable bloomers is because they need a lot of light while they grow the growth that we hope to have bloom this time of year. 
Mine do not get a lot of light in the past three years due to cost management. So no artificial light is helping the growth grow to size and very reduced fertilizer in order to maintain the growths that do grow healthy and strong. And I don't want to put in too much fertilizer, making those growths weak, making them bolt, making them look for light that they're not getting, etc. So to have these orchids bloom, I can tell anybody who is in doubt whether they are able to grow and bloom a properata, you can do it, especially if you can provide them artificial light. But you can see that my growth are to a degree a little stunted with the exception of the regular striata whose growth is just amazing and i hope it keeps that momentum for future years but the verkhoiseri striata that growth is a little bit shorter however it is healthy it is strong it has not bolted they get a lot of calcium nitrate during the winter months and when i say a lot i don't mean high parts per million I balance out the lack of light with the amount of fertilizer, but I make sure it is calcium nitrate so that the structures grow strong. I also do a lot of calcium and magnesium, so I alternate 200 parts per million of calcium nitrate. The next time the pot gets a flush, the reservoir is empty, 200 parts per million of calcium and magnesium so that I avoid the salt buildup on top, but also the magnesium in order to somehow help them to photosynthesize while it is dark in my grow space. This year in 2023, the first time ever I brought them out of the grow space and had them tolerate low temperatures of 12 degrees Celsius, which they can handle, but my setup, there is a catch. I have never exposed these orchids to these cold temperatures, even though out in nature they can handle less. But the day temperatures out in nature rise exponentially, which counteracts and balances out the cold that they have at night, and it warms them up during the day. I don't have that in winter. During the months that they were outside, the night temperatures were maybe 12 degrees, maybe 11 degrees. The day temperatures would reach 17 on a good day. So it's a bit of a risk because my setup is lecker and self-watering. And if you have heard of evaporative cooling in this kind of a media with this setup, taking out orchid roots, well, that is an issue that could cause problems. And I was trying to avoid that. But this year, for the first time, I thought if I'm going to be putting out 80 orchids every day, bringing them in, early evening during the winter months maybe maybe i can take the more temperature tolerant orchids which include my perparatas and leave them outside and i am guessing that the evaporative cooling effect has a differential of three degrees celsius i've never stuck a thermometer down into the pot but i am erring on the side of caution by going a little bit higher with three degrees that means according to my guesstimate my pots have a nine degree temperature level and my days don't warm up so having said all that what i am trying to tell you is they are more robust than we give them credit for. I do not have dead roots, otherwise that would show in the shriveling of the pseudobulbs. And if the bloom on the Berghäuserie were to have failed because my orchid is suffering, the pseudobulbs would tell me that there is a problem. But there isn't. They're all wonderfully plump as they should be. There's one thing that did occur this spring though for the first time and it may be that I dropped the ball. It may be that I didn't drop the ball. I don't know. But I have scale symptoms on many, many of the leaves on my perparatas. White spots that for me always is scale scar tissue. I find that very strange. That hasn't happened before. And because there's not that many orchids outside during the winter, blocking the view from all around the leaves, I am very reluctant to say that that is scale damage. However, in the past weeks, I have noticed scale on those spots. So which came first, the chicken or the egg? Was it scale, left a mark, and scale came back? I have no idea. So of course the scale has been treated and I wipe the leaves on a regular basis just to make sure that any perished scale bodies are well and truly perished. But the markings on the leaves 
they remain, which is a big shame, to be honest with you, because these leaves hold on for a very, very long time. And that is why I'm saying I am just grateful that they bloom, because a few little changes this late winter and into early spring with my purpuratas. So if you have any doubts about being able to grow purpuratas, you're not sure about your light levels, you can take it from me, from southern Spain, that normally advertises bright sunshine 365 days a year. Well, I am in the south, and I can tell you, yeah, not so much. <laughs> Get yourself a purpurata. The Werkhäuseri is the smaller one, if you're unsure. The Striata is the taller one. And you can see by the size of my pots, they are all pretty much on the same level. I am not using a bigger pot, a taller pot, to show how the striata is taller. It is just the bigger of the three that I have. And then there is a plethora of other purpuratas that are super fun to grow. Once again, a reminder about all the opportunities that you have some eye candy down in the description. So I hope you enjoyed looking at some blooms. And with all that being said, I want to thank you so, so much for clicking on my video. I would appreciate it if you gave it a like, if you have not subscribed to my channel. Oh, I would appreciate a subscribe, a vote of confidence from you as well. Thank you once again, Fernanda Nacimento, for organizing this care collab. Thank you to everyone for taking the time to be here with me on the patio in southern Spain. I wish you a beautiful day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.